Yo, hey guys, it's Drewberry here. Today I'm going over the balance changes that happened in the last patch a couple of days ago. I think it's been totally overshadowed because of the craziness that's going on in the game's economy. Um, but there were some significant buffs and nerfs, so I'm gonna go over those. I have the developer, co developer comments here uh, so you can get some insight into why they made the changes. And I'm just gonna provide a like, quick little what I think about these changes, okay? Uh, but there was a stealth change that hasn't been uh, recorded in the patch notes, but was confirmed by Ben Brode this morning. Um, previously, you were in the matchmaking, you were put against people of similar MMR to you. This has nothing to do with cubes or your rank. This was a hidden MMR, and that's how they would match up your opponent. Now, they changed it so that you can only, it's still MMR, but you can only get match, uh, queued up against people of the same pool. So if you're in pool one, you're gonna be your opponents will be in pool one. If you're in pool two, your opponents will be in pool two, etc. Right? So this is a really healthy change. This is big. Um, it's really gonna help new players when they're just learning the game not get bashed by these tier three, uh, sorry, pool three meta decks with way better cards that they don't have access to. It, it didn't make any sense. Um, so they changed that. Now the downside is you're gonna see a lot more bots. There's already a lot of bots in the game. You may or may not have noticed they're actually hidden quite well. Um, but it's to make queue times almost instant, which honestly I greatly appreciate. It's really nice with Snap to wait two seconds to queue into your game, play the game for three minutes, and, and then you're done. And then you can rip through your dailies pretty quick and stuff like that. There's a lot of games like Hearthstone, for instance, or sometimes it takes a while just to like get into the game. Then you got to mulligan and everything. Like to actually get to the fun parts, it takes like a minute or two, which is not a lot of time. But for card games, that adds up. So, anyways, there's gonna be more bots um, to comp to make the queue times faster. But I think that will change with global release whenever that does come. So just kind of hold out to then. Once it's globally released, this game's gonna be so popular, um, it won't be a problem. Okay, let's get into these buffs and nerfs. So I got America Chavez up first. So she is going from 10 power to 9 power. Kind of bad. I, like, I didn't expect this change. I don't think there was anything inherently wrong with her being at 10 power. She's a nice card to just throw in if you don't have a turn 6 play. And now maybe the payoff isn't quite worth it. Tough to say. We'll see how it plays out. There is a combo that she had with Jubilee, which was also a change card. That has been nerfed which I'm excited about, but otherwise, outside of that combo, I think she was perfectly fine, and I don't think this nerf was really warranted. Uh, next is Ebony Ma. So I actually made this exact change in a nerf prediction video a few weeks back where I gave him plus one power, so now he's at seven power. That's the change they made. I think that's great. He has a lot of constraints and difficult scenarios where you have to play around the card, which can be fun to navigate, uh, but the payoff wasn't quite there for like how bad the card might burn you. Uh, so increasing him to seven, I think, is a welcome change. Ghost Rider. Uh, Ghost Rider is a huge problem. <laughs> Ghost Rider is probably the biggest problem. So this nerf is very warranted, uh, but maybe not enough. Maybe not enough. So if you don't know, Ghost Rider is a 3-3, three, three, and he's on reveal, bring back one of your discarded cards to this location. The problem is, here's the combo. Lady Sif on turn two discards your highest uh, cost card, which is probably Apocalypse, Infinite, or something else crazy. She discards it. Oh no, it's gone. It pops back, but everything else is gone. <laughs> well then, Ghost Rider drops on turn three and brings it right back. Not only does he bring it back to, it's not even to your hand, it's to the, to the battlefield. So he's at 3-3 three, three with the upside of like plus 20. That's insane. It's insane. And then if he brings back Apoc, Apoc will also go back to your hand. So now you have two APOC. Like, just what? Unreal. Um, so anyways, now he's a four cost. I don't think that's enough. The the mana cheat, the power cheat, it's too much here. Um, kind of a cool card thematically. Uh, but I wouldn't mind even changing the ability because it's just crazy what he can do. Discard decks are powerful. I think they overcompensated uh, the power levels of, of these cards because they're discarding when really they did such a good job at making discard a good combination that now the power levels are just not so anyways 
I, I honestly wish he was like a 4-1, but that's just me. Okay, Kazar. Kazar being changed to 4 power. This is kind of a bummer. I really liked Kazar. Um, I don't think this change really does much. If you're going to nerf Kazar, this was the best poss possible route uh, because it doesn't affect him that much. His effect is the same. That's what matters most here. So Kazar is a really popular pool 1 card because in pool 1 you get a lot of 1 cost cards early on. And very quickly you can put together a flood deck, which is a really fun deck to play. Um, and he's a direct benefit of that. He's kind of your payoff in that deck to buff all those cards with extra 1 power. So he still says stays the same. He's still going to get seen and played a lot, especially if you're in pool 1, now that you're matching up against other pool 1s. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it was unwarranted. I think I would have liked him just be a 4-5, and I could see him going back to that maybe in the future. Who knows? Okoye. Oh, boy. Okay, we've, we've been all around the globe with Okoye. So she was previously a 2-1 on reveal, gave every card in your deck plus 2 power. So they kind of buffed her in a weird way where they dropped the amount of power she's giving to your deck to plus 1 but also made her a one cost, one power. So now they kind of reverted that in a weird way. It's like a weird amalgamation of those two changes. And now she's a two power, two cost, on reveal give her every card in your deck plus one power. Dead. I think they killed the card, honestly. She's just too late. It's too late to play this card if you get her on curve. Not enough inherit built-in power benefit and the plus one power like if you have if you play three cards after this so you're only going to draw four cards naturally after anyways if you play player perfectly on curve that's a plus four power benefit if you can play those cards that's not even guaranteed so yeah i just i feel like this was not i don't know i, I wish they didn't do this nerf i liked her at one I, I wish we had more time to see if she really was broken at one like sh that change the, cha the, the time between the changes was like two weeks. And I don't feel like they had enough data to warrant this change. But regardless, this is how she is now. Okay, next is Scarlet Witch. So Scarlet Witch has gone up to a 2-3. I don't really like this one either. I thought she was fine where she was. I like location disruption cards like this. Um, it's fun. It's a nice tech option that you can put into your decks, uh, especially if you're running like a single, let's say, ongoing deck and Sil um, Island of Silence or whatever the new location is, <laughs> Isle of Silence comes out and you're like, ah, oh, dang, like, I can't play my ongoing cards there. That's my whole deck's purpose. Well, it's a good thing I teched in Scarlet Witch, who only cost me one to throw out and change that location. Well, now she costs two. It's not so great. There's card like Rhino. So Rhino ruins a location, which is almost the same effect. A little bit different, but same, same idea. He costs three. And he's three power. Why would you ever run run Rhino when you can run Scarlet Witch? She had she gave him more purpose because he was the, like the middle cur of your curve location disruption, and she's the early curve di location disruption. And now they're kind of like competing for the same spot. I don't know. I, I don't like the change. I think they should revert that one. Which is kind of the trend in a lot of these. But here's a good one: Scorpion. So Scorpion was a 3-3, three, three. his effect to afflict cards in your opponent's hand with negative 1 power, and now he's a 2-2. Two, two. This is great. I don't think he's viable yet. <laughs> he just doesn't do enough synergizing with other cards, you know, like he's just kind of on his own. His effect is just on his own. But uh, but maybe he's got a place, maybe I just don't know the deck. But, uh, but now he's more viable, he only costs 2. You don't really care about losing the 1 power, that doesn't change anything. And, uh, and now you can negatively affect your opponent's hand earlier. That's really the biggest benefit. It's not the amount that you're affecting. It's earlier because they're going to have to play cards on turn 3, 4, 5, 6, and you've just given them all negative 1 power. That's awesome. So we'll see if he ends up having like a rightful place in the meta, but um, for now I don't think so, but maybe a decent tech card if people are running a lot of cards in their hand. Devil Dino makes a huge comeback with Moon Girl, something like that. We'll see. Weak guy. <laughs> He is, uh, he got nerfed hard. He got nerfed real hard. Hardest nerf I think they've done yet. Uh, so two mana to four mana plus one power. That 
plus one power isn't going to cut it. Playing this on turn four is a huge gamble. You have to empty your hand in two turns or else this is just four for four and that feels bad. There's so many better things you can do at four. Um, and best case scenario, he's a 410? I don't know, man. I don't know. And he's ongoing. You could That could technically be countered. So I, th I think this is a huge nerf. And uh, I liked where he was. 2-3, he's a pool one card. A lot of people were running, I'm sure. But I don't know. I think like maybe they should have buffed the amount of power they gets if your hand is empty to compensate for this mana increase. But regardless, we'll see if he still gets played, but I think he absolutely just got murdered, and we won't see the strong guy anymore. <laughs> uh, Jubilee, another murdered card. See ya later, Jubilee. Uh, and good riddance to you, because I didn't like this combination. So, before she used to play the top card of your deck to this location, America Chavez, the way she works, is she rests at the top of your uh, deck, but she won't get drawn until turn six so you'd be basically drawing the second highest card on, on the top of your deck but jubilee would break this rule and she would play a card from your deck to this location um play the top card rather and it would always pull america chavez or at least most of the time there's a weird like scenario where it wouldn't so this combination of jubilee and america chavez apparently that wasn't um intended <laughs> this is a bug or something so this is like a bug fix so now it's play a card from your deck to this location. So she's going to play a random card. I think this kills Jubilee. Because uh, she's now four, play a random card from your deck to this location. Remember I was talking about Ghost Rider being a 4-3? And like you have control over what he's going to play? This is even less control. Your deck might only have three, four cards in it. But you have to build your whole deck at that point anyways. You have to build your whole deck around this if you're going to play it. You have to have all high power stuff, which is going to be kind of hard to do if you want an early game curve and you're really constraining yourself to running those higher power cards. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You should need further support in future cards or something to make her viable again, but maybe an on-reveal deck? Like with Odin, it could be good? I don't know. I don't know. I think, this, uh, I think that was her combo, and now it's gone. But I say that, and I'm probably still going to play against an opponent who plays Jubilee and gets Infinite, so... That's just my luck. And then Hulkbuster. So I'm not even going to highlight him too much, but he no longer grants his cost to the attached card. I had no idea he was doing that. I find that kind of funny. Um, so basically, he's a 3-4. He gives his 4 power to that card. Let's say it's a 1-2, so it's a 6 power. Apparently, if you pull that card back to your hand, it would have uh, a 4 cost to it, uh, which is brutal. That doesn't really make any sense. So uh, now he no longer does that. So that's nice. So you can start running Hulkbuster again. <laughs> Just kidding. You probably never... This won't change anything. <laughs> Anyways, those are the busts and the nerfs that happened in the patch. You might have missed it because of all the craziness. But there it is. So let me know what you think. If there's cards maybe you would have buffed. Or if you agree with any of these nerfs. And thank you for watching.